welcome friends i'm really glad to have you all with me i'm going to conduct the proceedings in this way i have no one to inaugurate as you can see we'll plunge professionally into the dialogue i'm going to give you an overview of the report that i have written it's a second part of something that the department of ayush government of india that is the ministry of health and family welfare asked me to do in 2010 This was to write a status report on three systems of medicine as they are operating on the ground not a medical report but a status report on what's happening in the public and private sector Now this report the first part as i have explained really went into generic issues like the whole question of research what has dbt csir science and technology icmr Uh, the uh, the two councils uh, of ayurveda and unani what have they brought for the common man what benefit has reached the common man I mean, years of standardization years of uh, writing tomes doing clinical research what came out i gave my report i'm not going to get into that because the discussion is not on that you're welcome to read it i've given you the links there had a practice uh, uh, had a chapter on education what is the standard of the curriculum the syllabus how far are these uh, students going to come out and become proper doctors as planned or are they going to just become fish and fowl both mixed what's going to happen then the whole question of research i mean education research practice medicinal plants 90% of the drugs are made of medicinal plants are there plants available what is the quality of those plants i'm really sorry there's so many people would you like to come and sit here if it's not uh, i mean all the ayurvedic people know how to sit like that <laughs> can can there's plenty of space yeah it'd be awful if all of you walk out because you're too tired to listen please please come here i'd never expected such a big gathering i think the colleges have sent postgraduate students i'm very grateful but i wasn't expecting that all right now coming to um the drugs which i covered in the first uh, chapter all the business of gmp quality control enforcement what is happening that report was given to the government in um, august 2011 then i embarked upon the part 2 when i did part 2 i thought that we must have a brainstorming and the brainstorming was organized by professor shakir jamil in the central council the ayurveda council was there we got people from different uh, i would say backgrounds private practitioners research people all of the fraternity of ayurveda and unani and one idea that came out of the whole discussion was you know the adjunct use of ayurveda and unani for bringing down blood pressure bringing down um uh, blood sugar for um, skin problems it's all increasing but patients are doing it entirely on their own so i said what is the extent of this they said well nobody has really gone into what is the extent but it's there now the two research councils were good enough to set up for me a survey which i designed the questionnaire and we asked a thousand patients of unani medicine and thousand of ayurveda uh, in five different hospitals of both the councils there was a question and we said we'd like you to say what exactly do you go there for i mean the sense you come to ayurveda unani for what you're already on modern medicine so this is rather revealing that they came out and said uh, the maximum number of both on unani and ayurveda is a slight difference in percentages i won't trouble you but it's i'll just take a figure which is an average about 30% of them said allopathic drugs have side effects and indian medicine is natural in inverted commas the second large segment was that 18% of them felt that it improves the quality of life and mitigates symptoms there was also a very large proportion ranging from 21% for ayurveda and 12 for unani which said allopathic system of medicine does not suit the patient then they felt the dosage of allopathic medicine could be reduced by taking indian medicine particularly for blood sugar and blood uh, pressure and to avoid expensive diagnostic procedures was one reason now when i heard all this i said you know the allopathic doctor doesn't know what's going on the indian medicine doctor is not really on top of whatever is being prescribed for all this shouldn't the patient be guided better shouldn't the patient know what are the 
डूज द डोंट्स द रिस्क डॉक्टर त्रेहान थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग वाई यू नर्सिंग समथिंग Thank sorry, you for coming. For being late. No, no, not at all. Thank you. Very happy that you're here. And we just started. So we, um, and when I heard all this, I said it's time that one looked at what the ground realities are. I had the figures, uh, but that's not good enough. One has to see what's happening on the ground. I looked at what WHO had said. They said there should be harmonisation. They didn't use the word integration. Harmonisation. I looked at what the survey said. They they more or less brought out what my survey had brought out in in different parts of the country that people are dabbling and using both. Under NRHM, the National Rural Health Mission, government decided to integrate in a big way. This started in 2005. Thousands of doctors, Ayurved, Unani, homeopaths, were recruited. They have all been positioned in primary health centres throughout the country. and what did i find i went on tour recently to many of these states many of the people who took me all over are here today because i think uh, they couldn't believe that i actually would produce a report at the end of all the travel so um what i found was that the ayurvedic and unani doctors surprisingly were being used to do modern medicine work the same allopathic doctors who say what do you know you don't even know how injections are given you don't know how parenterals are given you're putting these people on emergency duty night duty so it's a question of i don't want to do this kind of work you're good enough to do this work this this was rather f- funny are you doing any ayurvedic work i was surprised and i put in my report maybe there's an opd of about 50 in in the on, on uh, for a medical officer in charge of um, I, i mean in charge of the phc or the chc and you have three or four as the opd for the ayurvedic and unani doctor so i said what's happening there's a drug nahi mila hai so i said drug nahi mila kab se nahi mila hai do saal se nahi mila hai so if that is the integration you're talking about people don't even queue to ask a question they'd rather stand in the queue for the allopathic doctor in other words this is going to just not take off after 3 years you are going to say oh ye fail ho gaya ayurved mein kuch nahi hai yunani mein kuch nahi hai but the truth of the matter is they are being used for something quite different from from what they were recruited for no harm in their helping no harm in their doing the kind of you might say work that they are doing because a primary health center sometimes has a lot of responsibilities i'm not castigating that but what i'm saying is there is a mismatch between what was actually designed and what is happening So I began discussing this with a range of doctors and their interviews are all in my report. You have people saying this is what we do an ayurvedic doctor what does he do when a patient of diabetes comes to him? What does he do when a patient comes with tuberculosis? What medicine does he give to reduce the uh, amount of you might say the drugs that are given for tuberculosis? Is that right? is that wrong i didn't know i mean who is going to answer these questions because nobody is looking at this subject and then i came across dr geeta krishna he's sitting on the desk and i've known dr geeta for a long time but uh, i didn't know he would join medant and i said look i'm very keen to know you are doing this integrated medicine how does it work do your doctors your modern medicine doctors even talk to you he said but of course So I said no but when I went to the health um, uh, you might say secretaries of different state governments people who are IAS officers people of my tribe I mean in a way ex tribe I'm not an IAS officer now but I mean I know them all so when I asked them I said please call your director health services your director medical education I want to talk to them about this issue of integration the attitude was when the meeting was held which all of them held these meetings I have photographs of the meetings the minute i talked of integration the reaction i got from the dhs or the director medical education was inhone kya kaam kabhi kiya hai kabhi koi paper publish kiya hai kya aata hai in logo ko inko to injection tak nahi dene they they have published anything they just make claims this is all you know spoil karte cases isko fir hamare paas bechte hain this was the reaction i got from almost all the hierarchy of medical people 
the health secretary, like all health secretaries, I have been one also. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to take sides. You don't, you've got many more things to do than to start taking sides. So you just finish the meeting and say, well, let work go on as it has been going on all these years. We come out in the corridor and the Ayurvedic fellows say to me, they come at him. This was the reaction. So I felt really, I mean, what are we doing at the end of the day? Isn't something, the patient and the patient's benefit, is, isn't that what we should be looking at? Should we be looking at Ayurveda, Yunani versus allopathy? Should we be looking at you are up here, those people are down there. So when I met Dr. Geeta and he said, we have integrated it and you must come and see at Medant what we're doing. I said, doctor, are you sure you've integrated it? How did you talk to these people? He says, no, no, they're, they're, they're all uh, working and we, we are doing the patients together. He gave me a big interview, which I have published in the report. How did they break the mindsets of doctors? Were their mindsets in the first place? And then finally, I realized that there was somebody behind this whole movement. Dr. Trehan has been, I think, judged by India today as among the 50 most powerful people in the country. But he was the power behind this movement of integration. I could not believe it. I said, this is, I've known Dr. Trehan when he was in escorts. I said, he's a completely a hard-boiled cardiothoracic surgeon. What is he doing dabbling in all this uh, Ayurveda business? I couldn't believe it. So Dr. Gita said, no, madam, he's the one who said, wait, he never forces anyone. He never tells anybody this is to be done. If the patient wants it, if the patient uh, would like to have it, they have integrated in a different way. They give the patient the choice of talking to both. So my doubts of, you know, that doctor told me to do this, but the allopathic fellow is saying, don't do this, don't do this. Who do I talk to now? Do I talk to some third person? Do I go to a homeopath and leave these two alone? What do I do? Those are the things that they've been able to get over. Dr. Geeta took me to various people. He took me to a team of doctors. I was very impressed because none of them were trying to impress me. They, they, they just were very matter of fact. And we had an oncologist, Dr. Kataria, talking about what she, how she was working with this Dr. Geeta Krishnan. Then I talked to the uh, thoracic surgeon, Dr. Ali Khan, and he said, he'll tell you his own words, what he found. So I said, this is amazing. Down at the primary health level, they're not talking about Ayurveda. It's all a question of it's nice to have a second person in the PHC to handle our labor and our deliveries and do all kinds of other work and night duty, certainly night duty because nobody wants to do night duty. Nobody wants to be in remote PHCs and CHCs and things. So really, I realized that this is something which is extraordinary that Medant has done this. Then I talked to a few Ayurvedic people. They said, oh, but it's nothing extraordinary. Hindujas has done it. Uh, somebody else has done it down in um, uh, Mumbai. Somebody has done it in the Kokilaban hospital. I don't know. So I said, yes, but it has not been done in a way that it's being done at a super speciality level and it is being done up front. It's not something which, by the way, you, uh, yes, I know Holy, Holy Family has done it. I know Mulchan has done it, but I'm not giving that kind of place to those initiatives because this is in areas where nobody would ever dream of talking about Ayurveda when a person is on cancer treatment or has had surgery. So that is how I got into it, and I have put it all in my report. I'll be delighted. The report, as I told you, has many, many chapters. There are 12 chapters in all. Status of integration is the most important one, where you'll have the survey, you'd have the extent of adjuvant use of Ayurveda and Yunani medicine, and contemporary Ayurveda. We have a doctor here, Vijendra, from the Himalaya Drug Company. There's a sub-chapter on Himalaya Drug Company, not because I'm hawking Himalaya drugs, but because... I was amazed that they have been able to break the mindsets of many modern medicine people and been able to get modern medicine people are now using their drugs. I said, how on earth did you do it? I had a long interview with Philip Hayden and that whole interview is there. It's a very impressive set of strategies which HDC put in and they called it contemporary Ayurveda. Very, very impressive. Then I thought to myself, you know, my oldest friends have really been the Kotakal people. When I was Secretary Ayush, it was the Kotakal people who first introduced me to Ayurveda. Then there was the 
father and son Trigunas, the old man who is no more Braspati Dev Triguna, and his son uh, Devindaji. These were the two people who gave me the kind of authenticity with which I could talk. They gave me the inputs which made it possible for me to succeed in many ways when I was secretary in that department. And I said, what will they say? What is all this medant and what is all this going on? You've just hijacked Ayurveda. So I said, no, I must have them here. I must have them say what they feel about integration. Maybe they disagree. I have no idea what Dr. Mudli is going to say. So basically, I'm not going to say very much except to add that in my report, you will find a chapter on my visits to five state, states in the country, detailed visits, the gaps in the postgraduate education, building credibility for Panchakarma, because you can't keep making claims forever. You have to prove effectiveness. And I've shown the way how it should be done. Uh, I have gone into the regulatory framework. I've gone into the whole question of how much can these people practice modern medicine. I've gone into the legal issues, the Supreme Court judgments. I've gone and examined a particular institute the, which is following the Guru Shishya Parampara called the Rashtriya Ayurved Vidyapit. There's a whole chapter on that. There's a whole ch a historical overview of the major contributions of the Indian Medical Heritage Institute, which is in Hyderabad. And uh, there is a whole chapter on folk healing in the Northeast, all eight states. What are they doing over there? Who are these healers? What kind of healing are they doing? And they are being now brought into the mainstream. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I have questioned some things there. There's a chapter on Ayurvedic veterinary products because now with all these microbials and this feeling that antibiotics are entering the meat and milk and uh, poultry, you need something which is an alternative. And Ayurveda can easily step in if only it did it the right way. I have given my own recommendations. And finally, the transformation needed. Four or five suggestions, which I won't take time if you're interested you will see those uh, suggestions which I've made. If you really want to revitalize Ayurveda and transform it and really build on it, there are ways to go. In the end, I just want to, I know I will miss out a lot of names, but uh, just permit me to thank a few people, uh, Dr. Khalid Siddiqui, Professor Shakil Jamil, Dr. Velyathan, Dr. Ashok Vedya. These are the people who helped me in different ways. The Himalaya Drug Company, the Dr. Narayana, who is not here, that is D.B. Nar Ananta Narayana, Dr. R.H. Singh, who is not here, Madhulika Banerjee, who is from the Delhi University and has done a lot of work in Ayurveda from a political scientist point of view, Dr. Ritu Priya from JNU, who has helped me to get to the bottom of this NRHM business because she had done a very extensive survey of the whole country. Dr. Ajay Kumar from the uh, National Institute of Ayurveda, who actually gave me four of his uh, professors to go and visit state pharmacies to say why are the state pharmacies not working. These are only some of the names. I know I would have overlooked a lot of people. That's only because I don't want to stand between you and these brilliant speakers who are going to follow. I'm delighted once again to welcome you. I do feel that this is a moment. It is a turning point point in history that IIC has given us the podium. This is an IIC event. It's not Shailaja's event. And that they thought it was important enough to have this event. Hats off to them. Thank you.